But in essence, it looks cool. It looks like a film. It looks like a cinema. It looks like you have this fancy, more expensive image than you really do. So that's why people fake it. The obsessive DP. Welcome back to the Obsessive DP. I'm Ryan. This is the show where we go over high level industry standard production grade tips and tricks. Today we're going to talk about these black bars. These guys right here. What are these? Sorry, I was doing a thumbnail. Um, these, this video was actually an idea from one of you guys down in the comments below. So thanks for shouting that out. Thanks for throwing that idea out there. And I hope you can learn a lot from this. Let's do a quick definition of an aspect ratio. The aspect ratio is the video size that you're looking at right now. If you're looking at Instagram, it's gonna be thinner. If you're looking at a Cinemascope movie, it's gonna be wider. That's just how these things are done based on the platform or the final display that these things are shown on. It could be shown this way or it could be shown this way. It really depends, that was my wife, it really depends on the platform or the screen that it's ultimately shown on. There's really just three basic aspect ratios we need to go over here. 4x3, 16x9, and 241-240 has several different names. The first motion pictures were shot with 35, with 35 millimeter film because it was a basic photography film back in the day. So that size was four by three. That's just what they did back then. It was more square than we see today. The reason they made their videos look like that was just because everyone did it. It was common. Probably back in the day, some photography guys got together and said, this is a great size for photos. So that's what they did. I know this is a good amount of history, good amount of boring stuff, but bear with me, it all makes sense. From the silent movies then went to the old school TVs, the tube TVs that we had when we were like one years old. Those were also four by three. About the time that everyone was getting TVs at home, no one was going to the theater. So the dudes over at the theaters were like, we gotta get people back in our seats. So what did they do? They started advertising this sleek, widescreen format because you couldn't see it at home. And if you did, you would have these nasty, huge black bars, so you'd only be seeing about this much of your little screen. And the screens were tiny back then as is. So the way they got people back into the cinemas, back into the theaters, was to advertise Cinemascope, or 241, or more of a widescreen, epic looking video. That was the common aspect ratio back then of all the films in the theater. And I think from there it got this stigma, stigma is the wrong word, it got this cool appeal. People thought it was cool to make widescreen visuals. Let's fast forward a bit to today. Now the dudes over at Vimeo or the, the cinema guys at YouTube, they put those fake black bars on the top and the bottom of the screen. It actually is just cutting out more of the video that you shot. Because for the most part, you shoot 16.9 on most DSLRs, most basic cameras. But in essence, it looks cool. It looks like a film. It looks like a cinema. It looks like you have this fancy, more expensive image than you really do. So that's why people fake it. It's as simple as cropping your image afterwards or just dragging an overlay of black bars on top of it. It's basically just an image you created in Photoshop. Has a black bar on the bottom, black bar on the top, you pop it on your image. That's what people do to make it look more like cinema. And honestly, it's been like 70 years of that and people are still doing it and still getting that cinema look. It's very interesting. I know a lot about this subject because in the early days of our production company, we used this a lot. We overused it. It can be really overused in just like a basic TV ad or a toy commercial, for instance. You're adding those black bars and making it look epic. And sometimes it works because we've done several like Marvel themed toy commercials, right? So we just throw the black bars on. Totally made sense in that universe. Where it makes the most sense is in Westerns because in Westerns you have really wide shots of your mountains, of your plains. And without the black bars, you just get more dirt and more skin. Guy. But when you get that black bar, it feels like you can get more of a breadth, more wide in your frame, which looks better for a Western, for instance, when you have a lot of those exterior wide, cool shots. 
for the most part, when you're shooting widescreen, you're actually not shooting widescreen. You're doing one of two things. In post, you're adding black bars, or in camera, you're using less of the sensor, which helps a lot when you're shooting something like red because the data rate goes down. You can store more footage on a hard drive because you're just not using the pixels on the top and bottom. You're saving storage space, which is pretty cool. But there's another instance that that widescreen is actually done organically, and that's when you're shooting anamorphic. Now, anamorphic is a very complicated way of shooting because you're actually shooting the entire sensor, but what the lens is doing is squeezing everything, and so things are taller. So afterwards, you actually have to de-squeeze, you have to squeeze down back to normal, and that creates top and bottom bars. So you're still shooting the entire sensor with anamorphic, just the lens is doing something weird where it's squeezing it, and then you need to de-squeeze afterwards to get a normal image. Tons of movies have been shot with anamorphic. You can see on the bright parts of the bokeh in the background, if you have a tall and skinny uh, sphere, if you have more of an oval sphere, in the background, chances are it's shot with anamorphic. That is the unique look that it gives off. One final note about letterboxing is that you're probably wondering, so there was four by three back in the day and then there was the super wide angle 241. How did we get to 16.9, which is what you see on all of your TVs. Your phone is actually pretty much 16 by nine as well. And how did we get there? Well, back in the day, some dudes over at the SMTPE, SM, SMPTE, Society of Motion Picture and Television Engineers, they got together and they compared all of the aspect ratios that have been used. The wide to the tight, so basically from 4x3 to 241 to even wider, they basically drew all of them out on paper. What they came up with was something kind of in between. So they had the super wide and they had the 4x3, right? You had like the square and then you had the rectangle. They found that 16 by nine was a happy medium between all of those formats. So four by three could look good played on 16 by nine screen and a super wide could also look good played on a 16 by nine screen. So that's why our TVs are 16 by nine. So that's letterbox in a nutshell. I don't think I actually said that word until now, but that's what it's called. It's letterboxing, those, bar, those bars in the top and bottom. Hope it makes sense. Give me more suggestions in the comments below that we can go over. I hope you learned something. Stay obsessed.